And the most We're noticeable ones are the Gatekeeper, a couple of Codices maybe, and an Andromedon. We want to hack the workstation, so that's really what we came for. It's going to be an 8 turn time based mission, and as long as we have line of sight on, uh, on our hacking uh, target, we should not have no problem at all with the timer. The access point we're after is just ahead. Move to secure the area. Expect hostile resistance. Right, so... Let's see what's up. We started in high ground. We do have a bridge here, or a highway, which will help us. And the target is right, uh, right in front of us, so it might be a very, very smart idea to to go on top here and start the ambush from from above. Let us use ZX, who is going to be our scout for this mission. Confirmed. And let's make sure that we have a good, clear sight on what's going on down there. Nothing inside of the house. Everything's alright up here as well. So yeah, let's just go ahead. Double time. The additional three tiles in the first two rounds while we are concealed really pay their dividends. I mean, look at that. We could move pretty, pretty far. There's the first hostile squad contact. Moving on. Running. Moving everyone with the dash here. We already know that it is not triggering anything, so yeah. Eyes on a hostile patrol. There is the second patrol, so Andromedon plus shield bearer, and we had, I think. A Lancer and a Heavy Mech up here. So that's 4 out of 13. All right. Still going to use the full movement here. Rusticated is moving in front. And that was the first, first round that we had. Perfect. Okay, so let's take a look. We do uh, we do have solid cover here. We know that there's one uh, one patrol probably going uh, this way. We do have a group of um, forces here, but our target is really inside here, bottom floor. There is the box. So we might as well want to go up here, clear the perimeter with the house, and make sure that we got the heck going. I am taking an, a very aggressive stance here, grappling. taking the, uh, the grappling hook to check if there's something on top here. Answer is no. So we can further scout ahead with a single move. move. Still being concealed at, the, at this moment in time. And there are three avatars. Wow, that's a lot. That'll just take some time to to go through all of their hit points. But if I drop a grenade here, that should open up line of sight for us sufficiently to go through all of them. So yeah, we just continue like we've done it last round. I want to get into range of, of our target. As a supplement for our engage on top, I'm using a solid engage down here. Let's do this. None of these tiles are in any danger of being spotted for the, t for the moment in time. 
So yeah, let's keep the rangers down here. Last but not least, let's get rusticated up here. All right, only two rounds into this. Uh, into this, we are already in a very, very comfortable position. When we have nearly side on the target. We know where a lot of these guys are. That's one of the patrols, another one is in the in the house. And there's just another one. It shouldn't spot us. Okay, so much for it shouldn't spot us. Now we're triggering three pots at once, which is okay. He had the seldom option to directly shoot, but we, I guess we have been lucky. So this uh, isn't, uh, this patrol is now going to be triggered, and probably also the one in, in the in the building, the three avatars. Yeah, there we go. I take an interesting position here. All right, so even. Four picks are being triggered. So that's three plus three times two. We have nine enemies now on the field. Let us start with cleaning them up one by one, shall we? Still have a scout, but that doesn't mean much for now. Let's go for the stun lancer here. Then we get Im uh, then we get implacable, and we can then go back. So let's start with the left flank, so to speak. Solid chance of critting and killing him right away. There we go. Before we go for implacable, let's do the other turns next. Let's first of all check what the uh, reward for hacking the tower is. Best case, we get no. That's unfortunately not the best case. Best case would have been recover all of the action uh, action points that your squad has taken this round. That really would have been the best case. Okay, let's assess the remaining targets. So we want to get rid of of the captain here. He's annoying. We do have four hard targets, and with hard targets I mean targets which have a lot of hit points, the three avatars and the Andromedon. Not necessarily dealing the most damage, but they are annoying indeed. We do have the mech, which could be shut down slash hacked, and we do have a shield bearer, which we want to kill as well. So I guess priorities are as following. Let's kill the captain and the shield bearer for in this round. Hack the mech, if possible. And try to and try to play with the remaining hard targets, just to make sure that they are being busy. The Andromedon probably is going to be last because it has the most effective hit points together with, with its shell. Who is going to be the one with the Mimic Beacons? Probably we are going to take Velius in order to throw the Mimic Beacon. 
just want to use all of his actions to the best of our capabilities. So that's a protocol together with threat assessment. I want to give someone an extra shot, someone who could dish out a lot of damage. In this case, let's give it to her. So that's the first action. Alright, so she will have an automatic overwatch shot. Next up, let's try to hack the mech. We should have solid chances. So 100% for a temporary stun, which will take it out for one round. Or we could uh, take the approach of controlling it, which I'm trying to do this time. 100% stun is just disabling it, which is okay, but we have so many other targets that we want to take care, uh, care of that I don't care if this guy is just like one more uh, who runs towards the beacon or not but if we could control him it'll effectively net us more damage so here we go uh, unfortunately failed It now has a little bit of a stat increase. We would have a Mimic Beacon here as well. I'm just considering the options now. So with 8 protocol. Let's maybe Mimic Beacon uh, first, then 8 protocol the Mimic Beacon and make sure everyone can see the Mimic Beacon. So, a potentially well-placed Mimic Beacon could be on top here. That might motivate the Andromedon, however, to, to go there. So I don't want this really. Placing it here into half cover, plus then giving it uh, uh, the A protocol, that would probably be a good idea. And this position should be visible for everyone. So yeah, here we go. She still has her overwatch shot in the next round. End of the turn. Now A protocol. Onto the Mimic Beacon. Plus 40 defense. That's even more than full cover. And now I'm willing to again try to get hold of this heavy mech. Should be another 50 50 chance. He can't receive the stat upgrades twice, so I'm not. There is no downside of doing that. Forty percent chance of, of uh, getting him. So here we go. And if you think about it, we even got him with stat upgrades now, so might not have been the worst of all trades. We've got access. So that's the mech is eff effectively eliminated now. We still have two more guys to take care about. Question is, which of these heavy targets am I going to attack? I'm probably going for the Archon here because it's it could be well seen by everyone so yeah lightning hands and instead of taking a single shot because I can't kill anyone right away I feel like um, I feel like kill zone might be a good choice 
just need to see what an appropriate range would look like. So this here would at least hit two. This here would hit two of them. Uh, probably that would be a good start. Just trying to increase the potential damage that we can deal as much as possible. So if I would be overwatching here with, uh, with him, then this guy would most probably run around here to go here, which would uncloak him and provoke an, uh, a shot. I can't just go there because I don't have run and gun. Um, and this here would still count for cover. Also this here would count for cover. I might want to do it, but I highly doubt that I could fully kill him. However, standing here is also not really optimal. So yeah, let's just go there. Un uncloak ourselves. And look what the chances might look like. Uh, so, like I was figuring, the chances are not optimal. 60% around all of these targets, because he's considered to have full cover. But 64% is also not too bad. Solid crit chance. Bounce laser sight. So let's give it a try. Blackhawk, greetings. Welcome to the chat, mate. Let us go into cover with Implacable. So yeah, let's take a look what the enemies are going to do. Wow, these nasty bastards. They placed another faceless one here. So the Andromedon is going to charge in first. And the kill zone is now going to start. 10 points of damage. First shot, one hit. That's already good. Too bad that the threat, asse uh, threat um, assessment didn't work out. Yeah, I didn't get it. Let's hope he's missing his melee attack. He isn't, and also he's removing the cover. So we're down to full cover with this guy. Somehow he was moving around. Somehow he he was uh, moving around the kill zone, which is unlucky for us. Luckily, we gave him eight protocol that now really pays dividends. Yep. So, two more moves, if I'm not mistaken, against targets which are not the Holo Beacon. Second shot of the kill zone misses, unfortunately. Okay, and JC Phoenix is taking the first damage. Another 10 points of damage. This random soldier who's literally running through the wall, he took uh, he took damage, but the guy who's uh, the shield bearer who's who has somehow s uh, sneaked himself around the kill zone didn't even receive a shot. That's strange. 
No, no, Killzone is a really good Overwatch. It, um, question from the chat, how does Killzone work? It is a threat assessment on all of the targets, so it always hits all of these, uh, all of the activities triggers a kill zone, but they need to be considered within the kill zone, really. Okay, so far so good, I might say. Let's start again by making a plan. So we still have a beacon here. Gremlin heal plus beacon could be an activity which Velius is doing this turn. So let's just heal up JC Phoenix real quick. Nice seven points of damage have been healed. And we will use the Mimic Beacon at the end. Now let's make sure that this Advent Officer is going to die. He's not only really annoying, but he also is pretty dangerous. He has dodge and a couple of other abilities which will let him soak quite a, a significant amount of damage. Luckily for us, our hair trigger just triggered. So yeah, JC Phoenix could take revenge of the hits that he just received from him. And he's even getting implacable. So he could reposition if we so desire. Next up, let's think about what our next targets are. I want to get rid of the shield barrel and uh, behind here we also have a soldier left. I want to move into open cover here and uh, onto open ground to give them a good target with a mech. Uh, that is probably the maximum amount of damage which we could deal with one set of rockets. I'm, I think I'm going to do exactly this. It will shred some armor, it'll deal some solid damage. If we would go for a gas bomb, let's find the optimal position. This here would pre be pretty optimal. All of them would receive damage, and the shield bearer would next round even receive further damage. Plus, it would shred a little bit of the shield bearer's armor. So, yeah, shield bearer th uh, shredded. All of these guys will get additional damage. Interestingly enough, we could move down there and school mine him because we are immune against all of the um, all of the poison effects and we would even end up in full cover. If it doesn't work we uh, we only lost one action and we would have still a token uh, a beacon left. So yeah I think I'm going to score mine him. It's not down watch it. 70% just missed. That's unfortunate. He received a little bit of damage though. And like I said, if we fail, it'll still be it'll still be a single action only. So we can finish him now. Solid execution. Perfect. That was really good. 
So, advanced speed, that's nice, and uh, we are lacking PCSs anyways. And advanced laser sight is also not too bad. So, yeah, solid loot. Next up, let's see whom we want to kill. There's still a faceless one and a pretty injured soldier back here. But we can't take care of both them yet. They are a little bit out of line, of, uh, out of range. But we can take care about this avatar here. And we certainly could also take care about the Andromedon, that's for sure. But let's start with the avatar, shall we? Finally. Sedex also has... Uh, untouchable, so if we kill it, we will be immune for the first attack that's hitting us. There we go. We now get impla uh, implacable to reposition ourselves. And we are immune against the first attack. So doesn't really matter that we are in half cover here. Let us continue dealing some damage with our sniper. Nice. Solid 13 points of critical damage. So that's more than half of his hit points. And we want to have a Mimic Beacon again. This time... Preferably somewhere where all of them can see it, but where they need to move afterwards. So yeah, probably here. Let's put this side because the avatars are anyways going there and I want to secure it from the right hand side where there's one more soldier. Good, so solid, uh, solid last round. We killed a lot of them, and I felt it was really also tactical-wise a pretty solid decision. Whatever happens there, I don't know. The Andromedon itself is immune against any form of acid uh, or poison. It'll just get the initial uh, the initial uh, damage of the grenade, but that's okay for us. We don't mind. First hit. It'll still be up for one more hit. So yeah, the other avatar is also clustering up. That's good. And it even missed because it was poisoned. So yeah, very, very solid so far. A soldier finally killed it. And we have one more faceless. Who is probably going for the mech, if I if I'm seeing that correct. But it can't really hurt it. The armor's just too strong. So four more rounds until this all will turn to a really problematic scenario. More than enough time to move our mech here and deal the maximum amount of damage, which in this case is, of course, including itself. So let us Oh, come on, really? Can't hit one of them? No, 
Okay, so whatever. It shreds its own armor, but also the armor of the Andromedon. So 5 to 6 damage, which would mean some of them would die, but not all of them. Let's first of all give the aid protocol here. Maybe even to Velius. No, uh, let's give it to uh, Rusticate because he has um, he has the option for multiple shots, which is super super good. So yeah, another aid protocol to him, just to use all of our actions. And now we want to get rid of the avatars, uh, the archons. Barely a hit. Damn, so close. Softening them up is also not a bad idea because now the grenade that I originally plan, uh, pl have, uh, have planned will be so much more effective. Throwing grenade. Both of the Archons are dead. We do have a stock, so this guy is going to die anyways. Just want to make sure we are a little bit further away. If we move here, we can kill the soldier and still move in for the heck next time. Okay. And we, since we are immune against all of the poisonous effects, we might as well stand here. So yeah, the soldier is going to die anyways. He get too close. He'll now get threat assessment as an automatic overwatch. Just the shell is left. So way. yeah, let's move up and use just another beacon. The shell itself is not a problem. We can even hack it next round if we so desire. Speaking about which, we also want to get closer to the hacking target.
not even sure if we would have needed this beacon because the mech is still next to it. Network is almost entirely locked down. We're running out of time. Get to that terminal. All right, all right. We are definitely going to get to that terminal. Don't you worry. If you say so. Let's kill the faceless one first and then we go on with the others. Standing in the middle of Acid Burn, which is just a little bit more damage for the mech. Let's take the sniper and let it kill the the Andromedon shell. So we start softening up the Andromedon. Done deal. Now the sniper takes the Andromedon and afterwards the face this one. So yeah, Andromedon down. Now we get our skill Death from above. Let's get an instant reload. Just have ammunition left. And kill the face this one. Which just died as well. Phoenix gets the Target bonus neutralized. kill. And I think we are done here. Just need to uh, do the hack. And yeah, of course, just another faceless one. Three codices and a gatekeeper. Oh, whoa, that's that is definitely a fear, fearsome enemy. I'll be AFK for thirty seconds. Be right back.
all right back so as I can see the last uh, the last hit from the faces one has missed um, the gatekeeper plus the three codices in my personal opinion is the hardest uh, pot combination that you could get so it's not getting harder than that that's, uh, that's the kind of good news here the bad news is it is going to be a very tough fight so let's start by hacking the working station so we can move away afterwards Yeah, why not? Let's delay the dark events by two more weeks. We've confirmed successful acquisition of the advent files. Eliminate any remaining hostiles in the area. Alright, next up we need to find a way to deal with these um, with these codices. Normally what I would do is I'd use AoE effects to kill them, but since we just switched out both of our kernels, it's now going to be a little bit more difficult. The tower did not offer us any really uh, any real good benefit. So I'm thinking. Let us instead use a protocol here as the first activity. I want to get rid of. I want to get rid of the faceless one first, and then we take care about the remaining forces one after the other. Solid damage. Velius, I like it. Lightning Hands finishes the faceless one. We still have kill zone. But for kill zone, we would need to have a good line of sight. That's currently not happening. I mean, up here is not any better. I don't know if this would really trigger anything. Currently, I, we don't have line of sight to, uh, to them. So they would need to move here. And Codices usually teleport, so no, that's not going to... To happen. We could use a beacon here to track them. into full cover and look at our odds I mean that's 60% but not a very high chance of critting anyone we need these uh, his beacons so ZX will just be on defensive duty here I really would want to do, go for kill zone, but I feel it's not going to hit anything. We need to reload her. Oh yeah. So JC Phoenix is going to go on Overwatch. Currently, by the way, our support 
Rusticated is standing in the open, uh, but he has 40 defense, which is nearly as much as full cover. I want to give the beacon also a little bit more defense. So yeah, he will just stay in full cover uh, in in the open then. And maybe we are lucky and we'll catch someone with our kill zone. Let's see what happens. The chances of catching of catching him are rather high. The gatekeeper will probably trigger kill zone. JC Phoenix had armor penetrating rounds, so that was not a problem. Very nice. We shred a lot of armor. That's good. And it's also triggering the kill zone. Even better. Unfortunately, not a hit. Too bad. But yeah, that was some decent damage. That was the worst case scenario. I was definitely hoping for a non crit. That's the weapon disabled. One, two overwatches, and a weapon disabled. Alright. Okay, so it wasn't a fully wasted kill zone, but it's certainly also not the best kill it was certainly also not the best kill zone ever. That would be a very smart move, but we don't have run and gun, unfortunately. This here could be an option, but it'll, it'll expose us quite a lot. Let's start by taking these 100, uh, near 100% 100 shots. I mean, Rusticator needs to move anyways, but I just want to make sure that we increase his chance of surviving, really. So, this Codex probably going to die. We need to keep on focusing the gatekeeper with her, so we make sure that the armor is being shredded. Let's reload first, and secondly, get rid of get rid of the codex. Unfortunately, the duplicate will still remain. Despite the high ground, it's only a 66% shot. That's really, really tough. I'm ready. Come on, let's shred his armor. That didn't work out. Enemy is still up. I'm on it. That's a secure kill onto the remaining codex. So two more codices. Nice here is going to be our mimic beacon. And if worst uh, if uh, worst comes to worst, he will take two shots. But we end up in full cover, so he can heal himself. Oh, 
and they only hit for four, so that's your uh, a little bit the advantageous part of it. So let's reload. Ready to engage. We do have run and gun with him. So yeah, moving into half cover is not necessarily a stupid idea. I just want to get Let's do this. him into a position where we can throw a beacon, but also run and gun these guys next round. So that here should attract all of them. Hopefully the gatekeeper is not instantly killing it again. So gatekeeper needs Wow, another instant kill. Gatekeeper definitely needs to die next round. Codices are not dealing that much damage, so next up is definitely the gatekeeper. Let us try to find a position over here where we can have a good shot on the gatekeeper. Moving with the grappling hook doesn't trigger any action. really need to deal damage to the gatekeeper. JC Phoenix has armor penetrating rounds. So we could move here and shoot at the gatekeeper as well. On the move. Good job. That was important. So the gatekeeper is now at only two hit points. Let's Gremlin heal ourselves. Healer mode. Velus could go here, still have the high ground position and maximize his chance of hitting the gatekeeper. It's outside of it's outside of um, of cover, but we want to kill it anyways. His stock did one yeah, damage. So low. All right, miss shot steal one damage for him as well. So let's not take any chances here. But go for the gatekeeper. The stock will kill it. Or in this case, a solid hit, which is fine. All 
right. You want some more? Codex is down. He has untouchable, so that's the reason why I'll, I'll aggressively move here him I up go. here. He's going to be the target which is going to be focused. But he will eat the first shot without receiving damage. Well, yeah, that's the other alternative, like... He could just decide to ignore him. And instead do some random bullshit. Secure. Status confirmed. Mission accomplished. That was a hard mission. Um, taking the rookies instead of the more experienced majors definitely ups the difficulty a little bit more. But considering that we had, I guess, three new guys on board. It still went pretty smooth. We play to our strengths. Um, the dual specialist setup is not as bad as it might look on paper. I really like it. Like two times haywire protocol. Give you a decent uh, fallback position in case your hack is not successful. Also the two aid protocols and the additional extra um, overwatch shots, all of this uh, added up quite nicely, so yeah, I think um, it was not a bad setup. I would have preferred two grenadiers though, because we really lacked a little bit AoE damage. Our grenadier also got her first promotion, so yeah, suppression. Two wounded soldiers, a little bit of loot, including Hello, a PCS, which is nice, an engineer, and we countered it. Plus, all of the other effects are, uh, all of the other dark events are delayed for two more weeks. Let's increase the healing rate here because we now have wounded persons. Also, the defense matrix could be in increased in its construction speed a little bit. So yeah. That worked out quite well. Let's take a look. We do have enough supplies. That's not the problem. Avatar project also looks fine. We could use a little bit more intel and I think Supply rate. Yeah, that was Intel. We were just going for together Intel before we got stopped by the covered ops missions. Let's begin evasive maneuvers. I think we have uh, been detected. <laughs> I 
Not again. Really? Wow. Commander, we can't afford to let this operation get away from us. Even if it means sending our wounded forces back into combat, we have to succeed at all costs. <laughs> wow. All right, let's promote our colonels here. We haven't done that so far. Volatile mix. Salvo, really nice. And saturation fire, also quit, pretty good. Anyone else here? He could use a promotion. Long watch, lightning hands, death from above, kill zone, steady hands. Oh, he even got holo targeting, that's nice. And serial. There's another ranger whom we need to promote. Phantom, yes please. Shadow Step, yes please. Another running gun, yes please. Implacable, untouchable, and rapid fire. Now, with this in mind, let us. start with our lineup here. Just want to equip everyone. Shifter takes the nano medikit and the skull jack. Let's do the weapon upgrades in a second. First of all. We'll do all of the um, all of the important items, the utility items here. All right, so he'll take. Oh no, we don't want spider suits. No, 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 no. We definitely don't want spider suits by all means. No, Have armor available. Give him a ref suit, much better. No, we don't want to give him mobility. All right, Roby takes another gas bomb. Beacon Warden Armor of Perfect. Let's take two incinerary bombs as well. Another Mimic Beacon. He doesn't even have the right armor color so far. Let alone his weapon upgrades are non-existent. So yeah, superior auto loader, please. Okay, so the sniper is also equipped. 
Let's equip the next team, because all of them will be deployed one after the other afterwards. So Sharpshooter, the Psy Operative will also be on, tra uh, on a mission. Might as well give them decent upgrades. Wow, so many operators. Can't believe it. Breath suit for her. Couple of AP rounds. He'll take tracer rounds. Honestly, he does need beacons because they have so many more abilities available at their disposal. Might as well just give them flashbang grenades, which are not too bad either. Mimic beacon. And blue screen rounds. Mimic beacon. Tail and rounds. I think I forgot the ammunition on the on our sharpshooters Okay, I, I'm not even sure if they will send in a third team, but yeah, just to be sure that all of these guys have equipment available. setting some flashbang grenades because they are never really bad you can always use them so mad kit plus flashbang we should have enough healing really The remaining guys are now only receiving grenades, but that's okay, we don't need any more. So yeah, let's deploy the first team and the rest will then anyways be updated one after the other. I want to start with the guys that could actually gain some more experience here. 